Hello and welcome to Clever Paws. This week's illustration again is a present for one of my young nieces for the holidays and by the time you will see it, the original will have been given as a gift. So, as with the grown up animals a few weeks ago, the subject matter and the color scheme are very much dictated by it. I know there will be a brief moment in the footage where the whole thing looks pretty creepy and not at all suited for a young child. Bear with me, it won't stay like this for long. This piece again is a mixed media piece using gouache and watercolor. I have been in a bit of an experimental mood with my illustrations lately. The line work will only be added at the later stage and it is rather unconventional, for me at least. I am also experimenting with the way I am filming my videos and you will see some of this in the end. I am hoping that this will compensate somewhat for the obviously artificial light I am using. We are close to the shortest day of the year now. I actually made that illustration about two weeks before then and it is dark by the time I get out of work. So it is dark for no videos until March and I obviously chose not to have such a large gap. For some reason I reached for my 200 GSM watercolor paper instead of the 300 GSM one which explains some of the buckling. It is still a good paper but a lot less suited for working with layers of thin washers. I did not originally plan to add gouache to the background of the illustration as well, but now I am sad I did. I don't think it would have worked otherwise because of the buckling. It probably even saved the piece. As usual, a list of all the materials used can be found in the description below. You have read the title, so what is to follow is not surprising. At least I'm guessing you have read it and that's why you clicked on it in the first place. Since I heard so many artists talk about it, I thought I might also have a go at answering this question. Do art supplies make the artist? The short answer is no, the long answer is some. That doesn't make much sense now, does it? But bear with me while I try to explain. The far bigger part is practice and the acquired skill level. If I was to hand the very paints I used in this piece to a child of around 5 years, they would quite likely still produce art that is typically associated with 5 year olds. They would probably even be quite confused and frustrated because so many colors in a professional watercolor set look very dark in the pan, plus they don't re really wet as easily as children's paints do. Equally as easily can cheap paints create frustration in an artist with some skill and experience. Factors such as the ability to glaze in watercolors are hugely important even when starting out with the medium. Looking back on it now, of course it makes economic sense to give children printer paper to paint with, and giving them non-toxic paint that washes out also makes a lot of sense. But I also think there is a point, well before most people consider it to be a thing, at which point children's art supplies should be changed out for student grade and introduce them to the capability of any given medium. So yes, I think there is some sort of minimum standard or threshold where the supplies enhance the experience significantly. Art also should be enjoyable to make, either as a hobby or as a job, and one should not have to fight the medium on top of the other elements of making art. At the same time, buying a professional set of paint 
Benutzer Psychos for Learning, Anatomy und Pilot Theory mit etwas in Elster Postgit to make an art. And of course, only having the supply sit there and look pretty isn't going to do anything either. So 95% of my sketchbook is box standard, technically can, the standard lets. It's cheap, it's easy, no worries about messing up anything. After all, learning to art is as much about learning to use the tools at one disposal. Therefore, the best supplies do nothing for one who is afraid of using them. That brings me back to the line form. I'm using brush for it, but not just for me. It is gold designer brush, a friend gave me a small dab of to try for myself. Incidentally, Gouache is probably the one medium, but getting a set of artist grade probably made the biggest difference. But then again, I haven't really seen student grade that would compare to Cotman or Aquafine, as opposed to really cheap ones, which can be really disheartening. And yes, I do have professional watercolors as well as student grade. The ones I use the most are the White Knights, And I also have a set of the Royal Talent Rembrandt, but I would not have bought them had I not gotten a really good deal on them. Those are the main ones I've got, plus individual colors from various brands, and I just got a dot chart of another brand that I keep hearing great things about. And of course, with watercolor and gouache, a little bit of paint goes a long way. There are two main reasons for me to pick them. One, a specific color that really only exists in one or two high-end brands and that I really, really want. And two, if I consider selling the original, or like in this case, giving it as a gift, knowing that it is going to be on a wall, hopefully for a long, long time. I know the holidays are winding down now, But I hope you had a good time. Hello and welcome to Clever Pause.